guys, welcome back to the cliff where it's a nice, beautiful day with some breeze and the Tyvek is flapping. <laughs> I cannot wait to get rid of that. And I'm hoping that today I can do that. So I came out, I actually came out yesterday So I just brought this window casing stuff out and I was just going to carry it down. I realized I might not be able to do it in one trip by carrying it. So I was like, ugh, do I sky mule it down? It's not very much weight. Um, I also brought my little chainsaw because I want to clear the trail where there's that big bush grown over it. But I thought, why don't I maybe just take the strapping down with the bat cedar? to make it worth one sky mule trip. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Even though I've mentioned I don't really have room for this stuff per se, but I'm getting closer to being, I'm getting closer to installing all of this. So I will just do it. the cedar strips for the window casings the window rough opening I guess you could say and then I didn't realize I was coming out here today I knew I had to come out here in the next little bit but I wasn't sure exactly which day so I'd like to frame the windows I'd like to bump out the framing for the windows if I'm being completely honest I haven't had a clear idea of how to do this because I'm all of my insulation is coming on the outside. I have one inch of rigid foam insulation that I'm installing, which is the only insulation this little cabin is gonna have. And that confused me because it's not, you know, typically you have your sheathing like this and then you put your window in like I did like this. But because I'm adding insulation, I knew that something had to be done different than just this. Long story short, I'm gonna stick with what I was originally gonna do and I'm gonna add strips and to take this window out, I'm going to add strips. The thickness of my foam, which is one inch, add that all the way around the window, butt my insulation up against that, and then the insulation to that window exterior framing becomes my sheathing layer, my water layer, I guess, if you will. So that's my plan. Now, I've never installed windows properly before. I really don't under, you know, I really don't have experience. I've not done this before. I looked up some videos on YouTube and there's a lot of different ways to do it. So I think I'm going to try to amalgamate all of the ways, come up with my own concept, amalgamate the ideas or amalgamate the concept generally and make it my own, I guess in a way, with the hope that I just, you know, the idea obviously is to make sure that your water, your water flow is correct. So that's the aim of the game. Bear with me as I learn this process, but let's get started. Again, 
I can't emphasize enough how annoying the Tyvek is and I just cannot wait to get this stuff done. It kills me. It's hard to talk, like it's hard to... Anytime I gotta say something, it interrupts my thought process, which is already a struggle as it is. The difference is, you know, I've seen where people cut the Tyvek to the rough opening. I've seen people wrap the Tyvek in and then add this. There's a, seems to be a couple different ways it can be done for the sides. And I think the bottom, I'm gonna leave the Tyvek tucked in. For the top, I'm gonna bring it out. And I'll cut up a little bit because I'm going to bring this up and this is going to come over top the window and then be taped and I'll have flashing, I think, but that's for another time. good being cedar because it's also more rot resistant the other thing that is standard I guess is to I don't know what this is called a sill um, whatever this is called should be slightly sloped outward so I'm gonna see if I can do that. Mine is, is very, very, very slightly. It's like a five degree slope it's supposed to have. I don't think mine is five, but it is slightly. If I probably, if I put some water on there, I mean, I guess let's test it. Good enough. Next window. Take that. Finally, you will be no more, you annoying son of gun. You know what I really think these things should have is a little hammerhead on them like maybe here so that the staples that don't go all the way in you know you can like use the same tool to tap tap it in That's right. No more Tyvek. Might actually be a dream come true. I think I'm 
gonna go for it. I think I'm gonna just start putting the foam on and then get a window or two in. <clears throat> now I realize that the better thing to have done, been done, is to have put metal flashing in before I did the deck boards up underneath the Tyvek and then down and then the boards on top. I believe that would have been much better, but that's not what I did. So what I'm gonna do is put the foam into here and then I'm gonna run a metal flashing up along the foam before my siding. So now I'm going to put on the blue skin. I recently realized while I was watching videos that there is a new product out there, this stretch zip tape. Now I didn't know that when I bought all of the stuff that I have, today's Labor Day, I just thought, you know what, nothing's going to be open anyway, and I'm going to use what I've got. I've seen new construction homes in our area that are still using this type of material as their water membrane in the windows. So I think I'm okay. Uh, the problem is the corners, right? The corners are the big problem for uh, water penetration and problems. And that's why that stretch tape is really so nice, but I'm just gonna do my best and make this work. I think I should tape these seams first because they'll be underneath the blue skin. So I have this. I don't think it's required for the blue colored stuff, but for the Resisto brand stuff it is, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Okay, don't, don't spray your foam. It just eats the foam, which is why there's a special adhesive for foam. Anyway, I cut this six inches longer, uh, six inches greater than the rough opening. Now what? Now what? I forget. I should have looked this up before I came up. I honestly didn't think I would be at this step today. I was going to refresh my brain. I do these. I think this inside part now. 
and I was going to use both um, the Resisto brand that I got is wider than the blue stuff, so I was going to use both. <laughs> this is the thing with this stuff, is it doesn't stretch. So, unfortunately, I can't stretch that corner, or this corner, to get it really good. You kind of got to... Break it. I know some people do all the like the whole height of the window here, like from here down. They do everything. I don't. I've also seen it not done that way. I think I'm just gonna put a piece from like here down. Okay, so I'm gonna put the window in. Now, from my extensive online research, no. shims, you need to put shims on before you put the window in and it should be level. So my rough opening is not level. So, uh, and I don't have any plywood here. I see a lot of people just use plywood for shims, but I actually bought some of these plastic things. So this is what I'm gonna use. I have a black one and a yellow one and then a blue one to create a level surface. I added one more strip of the tuck tape just so that I'm over top of the blue skin. I think I'm ready to put the window in. I think. I can't think of anything else I was supposed to do. I don't have the right nails though, but I'll just have to put some screws in for now. I will just put one screw in at the top. Oh. oh! I know what I'm supposed to do. Silicone. I'm supposed to put silicone around it before I install it. I don't think I have any here. So, that's probably all I'll be able to do. But I think this broom will be for sale if anybody wants to purchase it when the build is done. It's custom, custom broom.
me like quite a while to stuff all of those gaps. You know? It's almost 5 p.m. so I have to get going. But rather than leave this wide open, I thought why don't I just grab the window and place it in for now. This is a different window. So I have like three different windows. little monkey. You're a little monkey. Going through my stuff. No, you can't go in there. You can't go in there. That's the right pipe, is it? Yeah, that's heat. That's for uh, high temperature. Mm. 
Ooh. I know, it's scolding. So we'll see how long it ta takes. The only thing is it's a small, right, it's only a one inch, it's just a little less than one inch. 61 degrees. That's actually, I should stir it first. We're thinking we might take it into the welding people and have them put two inch holes or inch and a half holes. I mean, the tub came with those big two inch hoses. So the flow rate, we feel like if the flow rate was improved, it would obviously be a lot more efficient. So about an hour ago, I noticed that it was leaking. So there are like, there's one little crack. Where's my finger? There's a crack right here, like hair crack. But water is leaking. There's also another one up top right there. A hairline crack. So... Looks like we're gonna have to return it. So that's also another really good reason to test something out <laughs> before you take it way off grid. Unfortunately, we do have to return the stove. We are gonna return it and have them send us another one and we're gonna see how that goes. While we're at it, we are going to send the tub back to the welders and have them make just a few little modifications while we're at it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.